Welcome back to the vlog. Today, as you guys can tell already, we are working on the beloved LS400. The whole plan today is to finally notch the rear. I have all the adjustability in the world in the front, but in the rear, I'm basically as low as I can go based on my upper control arm sitting on the body. To fit my wheels, um, I'm not gonna worry about getting spacers and all of that for it quite yet. I still have to go lower in the rear, which means I have to cut all of that out. So I'll end up getting the Lexus in the air in a few, take off the wheels, show you where I'm gonna cut, kind of figure out uh, the game plan for the day, and then go from there. We'll probably end up lowering the front as well. I gotta do a bit more cutting. Probably wondering what this is. This is not mine, this is a, a, a customer's, which I'm gonna be getting to in the next video, so stay tuned for that. We got some big camber for that. And then Alex busted his trans pan yesterday, so he's <laughs> he's gonna repair that real quick with some, with some steel glue, whatever that stuff's called, until he can find another pan. But that is what is, whoa. That's what's on today's agenda. I'm just gonna kinda play it by ear. Not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with the Lexus yet. I just know that I gotta start cutting. Um, I know that the coilover kinda is not compressed completely, so once I do cut that, it will go lower, so I'll either have to one, raise the coilover, or two, um, cut some of the inner fender well so that my tire is not rubbing on the actual fender well. But let's get to that, figure out what we're gonna do, and attack it. Okay, so the LS is in the air. Figured I'd show you what I'm talking about real quick. So when you come to the rear, by the way, shameless plug, my SS kits are in the website down below. But when I let the car down, when I let the actual LS on the ground, this all raises, of course, because the coilover compresses. And the coilover sits on the actual body. So, of course, what a lot of the dudes in Japan do will cut out this entire thing and go do some crazy stuff. Well, for right now, um, I looked on the backside and it actually is kind of up to here is where the um, pinch weld kind of, you know, attaches and then folds down. So the whole plan is to kind of, I don't know if I want to just cut some of this out or actually cut the entire thing out, but I may either notch it kind of on the outside like here, cut this out so that the coilover can go up. I know I might have problems with you know, this of course hitting, but first step I think I'm gonna do is actually take off the SS kit, allow this entire knuckle to drop down. That'll give me space. I do have a metal sawzall as well as um, some cutoff wheels. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna use yet, but I just wanna make sure that my, my rear upper can go higher so I can go lower. These right here, it is uh, two 19s, 19 on the bolt, and then we've got three, which are spacer washers, which go on the SS kit, and then the locking nut. Just saw how easy you know it is to take off the actual coilover. And then from there, you just take off this uh, other bolt that's right here, and then basically slide it off of Okay, so after a couple minutes of cutting, we now have the tiny little notch. Um, I brought it all the way up until you see that floor inside of there. It's basically just part of the trunk. Um, I brought it up there just for right now. I mean, I'd say that's a solid inch up, which will give me an extra inch lower. Um, being that these are stock upper control arms compared to say Serial 9 or T-Demand or Nagisa um, or really any of the brands that make aftermarket control arms, what they do is they bring them out and then they actually bring the ball joint up and then angled a little bit just for, you know, to help with ball joint angle um, with a lot of camber. But of course being OEM, these are basically going to be straight. So if I had Serial 9 or some other upper control arms, then maybe I would be able to go a little bit lower because technically the knuckle would sit you know, a little bit higher um, 
because that's where the upper control arm would end, but we don't. So I'm gonna do this side and then we'll probably start on the other side, put the wheels on, um, of course, in the coilover and just see if it really made a difference that's worth it. All right, quick intermission on the LS. I just finished up cutting on the other side. So now I gotta do the passenger side. Figured I'd walk over and show you guys something real quick. So I mentioned earlier that he put a hole in his uh, transmission pan. Actually, it was tiny little nick, maybe like a little needle thing and bled all over. So I just wanna show you guys how um, it was fixed just real quick. So going underneath, um, this is called, I guess it's called quick steel. And what it is, is basically a putty that when you buy um, on the inside, there's a little, you know, they're, they're chemicals. So you mix them together like you were playing with Play-Doh. They heat up and kind of turn into putty. And then when you put it on the actual vehicle, it basically cements. So I can't move any of this, you know, barely put a nail. Yeah, it might take, you know, a couple more hours to dry, but it's been about two, dry, it's right? been about two, two hours and you can, you can literally hear it knock. So I just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Um, I had no idea about this. I guess it's another JB Weld product, but it's called Quick Steel, and this stuff is pretty damn clutch. So I'm definitely gonna pick some of these up and use them, you know, down the road. What are we doing right now? Test fitting, kinda. I mean, that's how it's kinda gonna sit. I, I notched, when I notched both, the way that the upper control arm, the rear upper control arm sits, one sits higher than the other. So now, the one that's hitting closer is the- Right side. Yeah, the, the back one. So when you raise it up, the left side is not hitting, but the right side is. So if you but come over here- But barely, it's barely hitting though. Yeah, but I'm still trying to go lower. So right here, this um this notch, you zoom in some, this notch right here is right where it cuts. So if I were to basically cut all of this out, this this where the seam sealer is, where my finger is, is right there where it kind of matches up. So probably I'm gonna end up just cutting this out right here and then notching up some right here and then on my upper control arm yeah. will kind of be like right there, I guess. So, coming down here, you can see we've got both sides notched. I did end up lowering the coilover uh, what, before I attached it to the SS kit. I spun this actual, uh, whatever this thing is, up the threads, lowered it some, so I could put the kit back on. We did test with just putting the jack underneath and jacking it up. Um, before that coilover fully compresses, it actually does hit on the body still. I do plan on cutting all of that out, cutting all of this out as well, because my wheel and tire is gonna be in here. I am planning on tubbing the whole entire inside. I've got some cool stuff, uh, you know, down the road to show you guys. But for right now, I figured I'd make a video on this. This will give you maybe another inch and a half um, to go lower. It's not the prettiest, but then again, I mean, it looks good. Some some people will cut uh, all the way through the middle. I just cut to allow for the upper control arm to, to go up. This side is not gonna hit. The side in the front is not gonna hit, but the side in the rear will actually hit. So, I think I'm gonna test fit these Vaugards. Of course, when they do go in the car, they will have a slight spacer on them um, and down the road, rebuilt. But let me throw these on real quick. We're gonna jack it up and put it on the Vaugards and see how she sits. Before the sun goes down completely, I just wanted to show you guys kind of how it's gonna sit at least for a little while. Hey, 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 the smoke clears though. All right, so he took out the other side. Let's let her down slowly. Oh! That's all the way down. 
Damn, we still got a while to go. Sheesh. Looks like, I actually thought it was gonna sit a bit lower than this. I'm kinda not satisfied. So I think it's time to, <laughs> to cut the entire trunk out. I'm about to do that as facts. Unless it's sitting somewhere on the actual uh, wheel well. Maybe the tire's maxed out somewhere before. I don't know, you gotta have to, you're gonna have to look at it. We'll lift it up in a second, but now I figured before the sun goes down, it's going down pretty quick. I'd show you guys kind of what it looks like. I mean, damn, I thought it was gonna be lower. It probably is hitting something. I don't know. Okay, well, let's clean up some tools and then we'll check out where she's sitting. Before the sun goes down too much, we gotta put ATF fluid in Alex's car. And then you can see I'm being blinded by the light. I gotta go hop in the RL, bring it over here. We gotta jump him. And then, so I think he's gonna fill some ATF up uh, once there's enough to where should be fine starting the transmission, letting it run. We'll figure out what the level is, keep adding some more and yeah. Bluetooth. <laughs> Test drive, it moved from the piston all the way back. So we think it's good. What we did was after we filled it up, we went through every gear. It wouldn't go into any of the gears, so we kept adding some until it actually initiated and then topped it off after that. So he's gonna try it out and then um, what's recommended is after a full day or at least after a day of driving or a day in general tomorrow before he actually goes anywhere um, he'll come outside when he starts it up and check the fluid because it'll be ice cold Okay, my friends, the sun is going down. The LS drove like a dream, as much of a yes, static dream you can get. I gotta pack up. I think I'm done with the LS for tonight. Sadly, the cutting did not get me as low as I wanted. I'm still not quite sure what I'm hitting yet. I do have a feeling that I'm actually bottoming out on the tire. I do plan on cutting out the entire wheel well Basically tubbing all of that, also cutting on the inner door, as well as cutting into my trunk. Um, basically where I just showed you guys, I'm gonna end up cutting more. I was hoping this would get me quite a bit lower, at least for, you know, to show you guys, you know, step by step and not to overdo it with the amount of stuff I'd had to do today, but Oh well, hope you guys have enjoyed this video so far. Hope you're hyped to see the Voggards on. I may end up leaving them on just uh, so that when I'm leaving for work and back and stuff, I can enjoy them on for a little bit. It's been a while. Anyways, stay tuned for the next video when we're doing the big camber on the IS300 because in a couple days, I'm gonna end up redoing those spindles, grabbing some spacers, and uh, you guys will see the rest. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Drop a thumbs up, drop a subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Go back and watch some of the other Fire LS content and I will catch you guys on the next one. Later.